Hello and welcome to Joy-Con Cast Episode 3. I'm your host, Nicholas, and this week we are talking all about Pokemon. Yes, you guys, this week we are talking about Pokemon, the Pokemon Direct on February 22nd, 2019 was all about Pokemon, and this week we're going to go ahead and discuss it. Uh, we're going to get right into things. Uh, Nintendo had a 7-minute Direct featuring pretty much the brand new Pokemon games, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. These are the next main entries into the Pokemon franchise. Uh, they're coming, of course, late 2019, I would expect. A fall release, uh, like normal, like probably around February, uh, not February, what? Uh, probably in November. Um, they'll probably be, if I'm not mistaken, uh, probably like on the 15th or the 22nd. One of those two. Usually when Pokemon games come out, at least for the past few years now. But, brand new Pokemon games announced for the Switch. Oh my goodness gracious. I, I... Uh, I should have record. I was gonna record my reaction to the direct. Um, last minute, I just I didn't though. Oh my gosh, <laughs> these games look so good. It looks like, um, uh, okay. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I'm gonna try to have this be a structured episode, but, um. Pretty much, uh, let's go ahead and start off with the starters. Um, we have, let me actually pull it up here. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up. So let me go ahead and pull up the starters. We have Gooky, which is a grass type monkey. It's a chip. It's a grass monkey. And I know we had um, the, what was it? Panpour, Panseer, uh, Pan... Sage, all those, like the grass monkeys from Gen 5, but still, it's a grass monkey starter. I'm, I want to know what this thing evolves into. This thing has to evolve into like a big, giant grass gorilla, and it is going to look so amazing. I am Team Grookey. I do not care. I am not going to change my mind. I am Team Grookey all the way. This thing looks amazing. I love the name. It's going to evolve into a giant grass gorilla and rain havoc on anybody and I'm super excited for that then we have score bunny uh, which is a grass or a fire type rabbit it's fire bunny it's okay it's all right and then we have the water type lizard sable and I like these designs I think they're cute I think they're they kind of remind me of um like the uh score bunny kind of reminds me of um, Chespin from Gen 6. He kind of reminds me of that. Um, and then S Sable, is it? He kind of reminds me of, um, uh, what was it? Uh, the, the water type from Kalos. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Greninja, whatever evolves into that. I forgot the name. They kind of remind me of them. Uh, they, they remind me of, like, Gen 6 when that was announced. And they released... Or announced these cute starters. They remind me of that. And their designs are very similar to that. But personally I don't mind. I like the designs. I think they're cool. I like the names. I think they're fine. I, I'm excited to see what these things evolve into. Um, I think that's. A, I, I think they're really cool starters. I'm very excited for them. I'm team Gookie all the way. If you're not. I don't know what to tell you. You gotta hop off the train. Because you can't ride with me. We're team Gookie. Moving on, though, um, we are going to, uh, let me actually pull up. I have the direct pulled up. Let me make sure I get my information correct here. Um, I believe it is the Grala region, and it looks phenomenal. It, it looks semi-open world, and I didn't expect anything like Breath of the Wild level of I guess open world or exploration. It's a, it's at the end of the day, it's a Pokemon game, and, and they're not gonna be hyper realistic, um, you know, open world. It's 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 a Pokemon game, and keeping things kind of simple, I think that's the best. Um, but the Growler region, it looks so, so 
good. It looks so nice. Um, the opening scene showed this really cool. I think it's the gym. It looks like it's going to be the grass type gym. It, it has this big dome for where I'm assuming the gym's going to be. Uh, so it looks like when you battle a gym, there'll be like a crowd of people around you watching. That's kind of something that showed near the end with somebody entering this arena or dome. So that would be kind of cool if you go to battle the gym leader and you have a crowd of people watching as you're trying to earn that gym badge. I think that's really cool. Um, but it shows this dome. The Pokemon Center looks really fancy. I don't know what it is about it. It just it looks fancy. Um, there's houses everywhere. There's tons of trees, tons of land. Um, I have the I have the deck pulled up here. Let me let me let me kind of, I'm skimming through it as as I talk here. Um, but it just it looks so so good. I I wasn't. I was kind of let down by Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. I didn't play them. I played Sun and Moon, but I, I did not bother going back and playing the Ultra Sun and Moon games. At that point, I kind of migrated to the Switch. And I didn't feel like busting out my 3DS anymore. And I, I don't know. They just didn't seem like all that, I guess. Um... I don't know, they just, they didn't excite me, like past Pokemon games did, and even Sun and Moon, like, yeah, it, it was exciting, I bought a couple copies of the game at launch, I played them, I enjoyed the games, but I I did not spend as much time, I mean, I did spend a lot, I, I think I spent, I think I might have spent maybe 80, 90, maybe 100 hours on the story alone in Sun and Moon, um, during my original playthrough, I actually spent quite a lot of time. But outside of that, I, I didn't play a lot of, like, the post-game stuff. And stuff after after that just didn't really excite me. I, I didn't really care for it all that much. I will have to admit, though, that it is kind of a staple of the Pokemon games. That generation, it, it created a, a new rule set it, it, for, for Pokemon games. Like, it created a new checklist you know it, it kind of updated things it changed things it made you know obviously we didn't have gyms it added um well we still had my me we still have mega evolutions but stuff like that but alolan forms um there's a bunch of stuff i'm forgetting right now as i mentioned it but there's just a lot that that series of games you know gen uh gen 7 brought to the table and i, I i'm excited to see how these new pokemon games on switch reinvent the series again if they i'm sure there's there's got to be something um new here but it, it's gonna be exciting to see either way man I, i'm just i don't know these look a lot better than what i think sun and moon or even ultra sun ultra moon were so that's that um but um I'm just watching this trailer. Man, this game looks so good. And it does look... It looks like there are, there are different camera angles for this as well. I'm watching these trainers walk. And there are different camera angles for when they're walking. Uh, there's different... You can kind of see the open world. Um, it looks fantastic. Uh, so it looks like Wild Encounters are also back. Um, when you step into grass, you actually do encounter a Pokemon. I didn't see a single Pokemon... I didn't see a, a single Pokemon walking around. If I was, if I were to take a guess, I would say that Pokemon do not follow you, and I would say that Pokemon aren't going to be in the open. They're not going to have open world sprites like Let's Go did. I would imagine for. Something I would imagine for Let's Go where there's a hundred and fifty some Pokemon, um, it's easier to make a, a sprite for each Pokemon and to have it follow you and be in the open world. But at this point, we already have well over eight hundred Pokemon, and this generation could bring, even if it brings another one hundred, we're getting close to nine hundred Pokemon. We're, we're we'll have a thousand Pokemon by the time the next Pokemon game comes out. By the time the next new installment comes out. 
1,000 Pokemon. That's how close... We're, we're getting so close to that. And... I, I guess outside of just technical uh, difficulties with, with, with designing an open world... Or an open world. With, with designing a... A world sprite for these characters or for these Pokemon. That's a lot of Pokemon. That is a lot of Pokemon. And I'm interested. I would am I don't know. I wonder if part of the Let's Go games are not only to um uh, not only to kind of Ride the hype train of Pokemon Go and monetize that more and, and bring people into the Switch uh, system and get people excited for the main story by tying it with Pokemon Go. I'm sure that's a big inspiration, but I wonder if doing remakes and then doing the Let's Go games are, are kind of Game Freak's way of delaying the inevitable of having that many Pokemon because... That is a that that's a lot of Pokemon. That's a lot of Pokemon. <laughs> and I don't know, I think at some point having too many Pokemon like that might overcomplicate the franchise. I don't know. Because like at some point are there too many Pokemon? And then, I guess when it comes to, like, the competitive side of things, you have to remember all that typing, all the abilities, stuff like that, which was never a problem for me. But growing out the Pokédex into this great big thing, I really, I wouldn't be so upset. I wouldn't be so upset if we didn't see that many Pokémon this generation. Or, or, or maybe not necessarily this gen, but definitely... I feel like we're going to slow down um, with the Pokemon because, at so, like I said, at some point it's just I feel like it's it's almost too much. Um, but either way, going back to the open world or the the overworld sprites, that's what I keep trying to say. Um, I don't think we'll have that. If we do, I think maybe for select Pokemon like legendaries. Um, usually have them where you can walk up to them and talk to them and stuff like, or encounter them, stuff like that. Um, legendary starters, maybe odd ones here and there. I really don't think there's going to be 900 overworld sprites in this game. I think, um, I, I could understand why Game Freak doesn't want to do that. I can't imagine how much time that would take to design a walking sprite for them to sign, you know, put them in different locations in the game. Um... I would have to imagine it's probably not even worth it as well. But either way, um, yeah, walking uh, around in grass looks like you do get a random encounter, which I kind of, I did really miss from Let's Go. And I was hoping it would make a return in the main series game. So I'm glad to see that it is. It looks, uh, it looks like they're going back to the roots with stuff like the gym leaders, uh, wild encounters. There's wild battles again. I missed that in Let's Go. And I know Let's Go are, are kind of, not necessarily main, they're not main series games. They're just remakes, in a sense, a reimagining of games, in a sense. Um, otherwise, the 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 world itself looks so nice. It looks so good. And outside of just the world, even the character designs, this game doesn't look like Let's Go at all. And it it doesn't look as necessarily look realistic in any sense, but. It doesn't look like um, it doesn't look like a cartoon. It does have some like shading and a, a slightly different design. It doesn't look like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which I I personally didn't mind the art style of those games. I didn't ma like I kind of liked the cartoon feelings of the games. They feel young and youthful and you know whatever. I I liked them and I think for those games targeting a general market or general population i think the art style was more than fine but i personally really like the new art style and, and just the way the game presents itself and the way it looks it looks so so cool so i, I enjoy that um let me see watching this direct again 
Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield are the titles of the games. I love these names. I'll be honest. I really do. I love these names. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. I wonder what... I wonder what... I guess... Relation these... I, I guess, like, what... What the names mean. I, I'm, I'm really curious. Because these are kind of... Like, ever since X and Y... You know, obviously that's when Nintendo kind of, or Game Freak kind of stepped back from uh, the colorful names, the color names. Um, I guess you, you had like Ruby and Sapphire and Gold and Silver. I guess those were more like gems, um, even Diamond and Pearl. But they kind of took a step back from like, I guess, gem names and color names. They did X and Y, um, Sun and Moon. And now we're getting sword and shield. Man. I'm exci I'm excited to see what those names have in relation to the game's story and all that. I'm really excited to hear that. Um I really also want to find out what makes these games different. I'm sure there's there's gonna be Pokemon like exclusive to one version or the other. Um with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Normal well, first off, normally I do pick up both versions of the game. I've been doing that. As long as I can remember, usually I buy one at launch, and then I'll usually get the other one during around Christmas time. I, I would buy the other version, um, and I, I've done the same thing for, for such a long time. Uh, Pokemon Let's... Well, actually, yeah, I did end up picking up Sun and... Yeah, because I picked up... Yeah, I did end up buying Sun and Moon. I only bought Let's Go Pikachu... Last year when that came out, I just, first off, I could almost, I was somebody who was very skeptical, very, very skeptical about the Let's Go games. As as big of a Pokemon fan as I am and as I was, it just seemed so, I don't know, it just seems like targeted towards a more general population and targeted more so towards the Pokemon Go players. And I love Pokemon Go. I play Pokemon Go, but I play Pokemon Go because I played the main series games, you know, and now there's a lot of people who are going to play the main series games because they played Pokemon Go and because they pay, uh, played Pokemon Let's Go. So this is going off topic from what I was going to talk about, but let's talk about it. Are they, I really hope we don't. I, I hope th I don't know. These look kind of these look as as mainstream, mainline, uh, you know, hardcore RPG Pokemon games as you can get. Just from the way that we see wild battles, wild encounters, the gyms are back. The game looks like that and presents itself like that. So I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm hoping that. I mean, I I don't mind like motion control to throw the Pokeball. I kind of. Hope that stays because it's kind of after doing it for like a hundred hours in Let's Go Pikachu now. It's it's kind of not necessarily a habit, but it just it feels more natural to do than just pressing the A button. And even after playing Pokemon Go, I play Pokemon Go every day. I love Pokemon Go. And there are some elements that I guess I wouldn't mind if Pokemon Sword and Shield adapt from Pokemon Let's Go and, and from Pokemon Go. I really... I, I don't want Pokemon Go integration. I don't want that. For... Having it in Pokemon Let's Go makes sense. Outside of that, I think that should be it. I, I don't want too many Pokemon Go integrations with the main series games. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess... I guess that also brings up the question, will Pokemon or PokeBank work? Will they bring that to... Is there even a way to bring that to Switch and have all of your Pokemon from uh, previous 3DS titles transfer over? Is there a way to do that? Is there a way to... Do, I'm, I'm not sure if there's... If that's going to be a reality, if that's going to happen. But if not, I guess then, yeah, it'd be kind of cool to have... I mean, after after playing so much of Pokemon Go, 
after playing so much of Pokemon Let's Go. At first, I didn't care for the Pokemon Go integration. I really didn't. I, I, I felt like, I don't know, I wanted Go to be separate from the main series games. And I know Let's Go isn't a main series title. Not in the sense like Pokemon Sword and Shield are. But after, you know, after the integration between Go and Let's Go, I don't think I would mind all that much now. If you could connect Pokemon Go with the main series games. I don't know. I I don't know. I think that would be I think that'd be kind of cool. I don't know. I I don't know. It's such a weird thing because like I think Pokemon Go and Pokemon Sword and Shield should be two different properties and should be treated like two different properties under the same name, under the same brand because they are two different games. So yeah, I I don't necessarily want this game to connect with Pokemon Go that much. But I really wouldn't mind the motion control. Even though I think it needs to be worked on a little bit. Because uh, there are times where I throw my Joy-Con straight at the Pokemon. And it goes off to the side. Like, hello? Like, what? So, I think if that gets fixed. And maybe maybe most of it is just my fault and user error. But still, clean up the, clean up the motion control. I, I really wouldn't mind... I really wouldn't mind motion control for throwing Pokemon. If they give the option to also just press A, then that works as well. But these games, I don't know. I think the way that Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee worked as far as console games where you just use a single Joy-Con, I don't think that was a bad way. Nintendo usually does... They usually do things in a very simple way, sometimes, and they usually don't overcomplicate things sometimes, and I would love for Pokemon Sword and Shield to do the same thing, where if you're going to play the game on TV, don't overcomplicate it. Maybe, yes, allow uh, Pro Controller support this time around, but having just a single Joy-Con, in my opinion, wasn't a bad experience, and I got used to it really quickly, to the point where... There are a lot of other games that I I just want to use a single Joy-Con. I want to use two Joy-Cons split. Um, even though I played like that for most games before. But Pokemon Let's Go just really... It's such a simple way to play the game. And it works so effectively. I, I would like Sword and Shield to kind of follow in those footsteps. At the same time, I would like Pro Controller support. Uh, give the option... These are main games now. Give the option. I think that would be fine, but... Don't overcomplicate things with the controls. What, you know, I just it just hit me that this is going to be on a big screen TV. These are console Pokemon games. This is insane. Pokemon Let's Go was, was... You know, obviously those were console Pokemon games that were also, you know, handheld. But these are... I mean, 900 Pokemon, gyms... I'm hoping the post game is fantastic, but but gyms, Elite Four, there's gonna be a whole Pokédex, a whole new, po uh, a whole new Pokédex, a uh, uh, full Pokémon to collect, new starters, new region to explore, everything like that, and it's gonna be all on a big screen TV. This is going to be phenomenal. Um, but yeah, going back to Let's Go. Originally, I was gonna say I I get off topic and I. I start rambling on about other things but i was kind of skeptical about pokemon let's go even though i enjoy pokemon go i didn't know if i would enjoy that in like infused with a 60 dollar pokemon storyline game of sorts and i ended up loving pokemon pikachu pokemon let's go pikachu i loved it i i i loved it um I played through the story. I, I, you know, obviously it's Gen One. We've played them all before, but I loved it. I think there's plenty of post game and shiny hunting. That's usually what I do. Um, and if I'm being honest, I think Pokemon the Let's Go games might be some of the best Pokemon games in the franchise. I'm serious. I really do. I think, yeah, there's a lot. That they lack. And I know some people will sit there and say. Well they can't be the best. Because they lack stuff. Because they're missing out. 
you know, abilities. Um, there's no items or no held items. Um, there's a bunch of stuff I know I'm missing, but but stuff like that. You know, it, it miss the, there. There's a lot that it misses out on, and a lot that the main series games are offered that added that extra sense of strategy and thinking and stuff like that. And Pokemon Let's Go Comp strips that. But it does it for a more streamlined experience. And I think... I think that worked. I, I think it worked. I think it, it felt... Very like I said, po like Nintendo Game Freak, they usually make things very simple, and I think this time around, it's a very simple way to reimagine Generation One, and I kind of liked it. However, I don't want that in these games. I, I do want these games to be, you know, give us held items, give us abilities, give us, you know, all that stuff. But I I liked it because it was a more streamlined, just easier experience. Experience, I guess, and I do miss. I did miss the challenge. I did miss. Uh, I did miss thinking about should I swap this Pokemon out? Should I do this? Should I do that? Uh, worrying about random battles. Um, I didn't really have that. And let's go. And I do miss that. But for what let's go is trying to be, I think it worked to some extent. But I think they're top three. I think Pokemon Let's Go are, are top three Pokemon games. They are good. They are good games. And I understand, yes, there's a lot that they miss out on. And after playing it for so long, I, I realized that they skip out on those, like I said, abilities, held items, stuff like that. They miss out on that for the greater good of the game to provide a, a more, I guess, structured, easier experience. And... In the end, I, I liked. I don't think there's a lot of replay value there. Um, I, I'm more likely to replay Heart Gold, Heart Silver, Black 2, White 2, um, Ruby and Sapphire. You know, I'm, I'm more likely to play replay those games than the Let's Go games. But still, I think for what they were, they did what they had to do really, really well. And there is a lot that these next Pokemon games... There's a lot that these next Pokemon games have have to I think can learn from the Let's Go series so I was very skeptical about them I ended up really liking it I ended up putting it over 100 hours into Let's Go Pikachu and I'm still playing it um and I, I'm really I'm really excited for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield after playing Let's Go I was very skeptical like I said but I don't know. I'm excited to go to the Gala region. I'm excited to play these new games. I have a lot of faith in Game Freak. I think there's a lot that they've learned between... I would say even like Omega Ruby, Alpha Sephir, and between that and Let's Go, I think there's a lot that, the, that they've learned that they've been putting towards the Switch version. This is... This is going to sell like crazy. I don't know exactly how many copies Let's Go sold. I would imagine it, it was a lot. I would imagine it was very... Very, very good for being the first Pokemon games on Switch, especially in it, it kind of its best time period. I mean, the Switch is selling really, really well right now. Yeah, this game is going to this game is going to sell it like crazy. And, and man, this game, I, I think there's going to be a lot more to it. And obviously, this was a seven minute direct. Most of it was gameplay. Um. Some of it was game footage, some of it was, I, I think some of it was like an in-game engine, but they showed off quite a lot. There's still a lot between now and November, so I'm sure over the uh, over the months, I almost said over the years, but over the months, we're going to learn more information regarding it. Um, and this is kind of what I thought Nintendo would do. We just had that other direct like a week ago, like last week, or the week before that, we just had... Nintendo Direct. I think it's on the 13th. I think it was on the 13th. Yeah. Um, we just had that. And I did... A lot of people were expecting Pokemon to be in that Direct. 
And even then and there, I, I was like, there's no way. There's no way that Pokemon is too big of a game franchise to have it be a part of another direct. It's going to get its own. And here it is a week or two later. It has, it has its own direct before E3. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another Pokemon direct maybe before E3. Well, no, I do think we'll see a Smash Bros. Direct for the 3.0 update. I think we'll see one maybe featuring like Joker, the 3.0 update, stuff like that. I would expect... I would expect a direct for that. And then maybe one more Pokemon direct before E3. But I think this could be... A, this and probably Animal Crossing will be huge titles to talk about during E3. Which makes E3 this year super exciting. Two of my favorite Nintendo games. My two, my top two favorite Nintendo games. Pokemon Animal Crossing. At E3 this year. That's, that is a dream come true. Hopefully there's other, obviously there's going to be other stuff as well. But my goodness. That will be, that would be a heavenly experience. If we get a whole E3 about Animal Crossing and Pokemon. Maybe some Smash stuff, some other stuff. In the works, I'm just super excited. It's poke. It's I'm I'm excited to be excited about Pokemon games again. I really haven't been this excited since like maybe X and Y. I don't know. I was excited about Sun and Moon, and I, I was towards close to its launch. I was getting more and more excited about Let's Go, and I I think I even I might have tweeted out. I might have even said. That yeah, I am very excited for Let's Go. As excited as I am for since X and Y, and that that was true. I do enjoy the games. I genuinely do. I think they're fantastic. I think they're great. I I love it. But this is, you know, new starters, new region, new Pokemon, new gyms, new everything like that. We might see. Oh, do you think we'll see a new type? I don't know. Do you think we'll see? We might see new evolutions too. It's been a minute since we got new evolutions. We might see like. Well, we still need like poison, steel, bug. We're missing out on some evolutions. We're missing out on some evolutions. So maybe we'll see some evolutions. Maybe we'll. I don't know what they would add for a new typing. Typings are kind of like the Pokedex, like the Pokemon that I was talking about earlier, where I don't know if they would. I don't know if they would add too many typings. Just like I don't know if they would add too many Pokemon. Because I feel like there is a point where it becomes too much. There's a point where it becomes too much. Having to remember all of this information. And I guess you don't necessarily need to remember it. Because you can just play the games and be surprised when they pop up. And then after your playthrough, be done with it. But... I don't know. I don't know if they would overcomplicate the typings. Because how many typings are there now? Let's see. There are currently 18 types. Fire, water, grass, electric, psychic, steel, normal, fairy, dark, flying, ghost, poison, ice, ground, fighting, dragon, rock, and bug. That's how many types there are. That's a lot. That's actually a lot more than I thought there was. I knew that there was. I knew there's a ton of types, but I don't know. Maybe we will see. I mean, eight. I guess nineteen twenty types of Pokemon. Ah, oh, that actually sounds crazy. That does sound crazy. That does sound crazy, actually. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they'll do as many typings as as I think they might, because I I do think they want to keep it kind of simple and kind of easy to get your feet wet with and, and to experience but either way um i have high hopes for the games i'm excited for them it feels good to be excited for new pokemon games again i'm sure i say this like every time a new game comes out but i haven't been excited for this game like i, I haven't been excited for pokemon like like it's took a long time like so, since x and y that's when i was like truly i was on i don't know what i was on back when those games came out, but man, they were just, that was exciting to get your hands on. 
And I think it was because, you know, it was the first 3DS games. It was the first, it was after Gen 5, there was more of an open world. The 3D characters and the 3D design was exciting. And I think that's kind of why I'm excited. These are the first Pokemon games, the first main series Pokemon games on Switch. There's going to be so much new stuff to explore and so much new stuff to see. And a new engine, a new this, a new that. And it's going to be not only on a handheld, but a console. And I think with that comes a lot of changes and a lot of new ideas and, and new ways of playing the game. And I think that's why I'm excited, or that's why I'm excited, because we haven't really had this since X and Y. X and Y were obviously the first 3DS games, these being the first Switch games outside of Let's Go, which I don't know if they count in the context that I'm talking about, but. But it's it's exciting and it's cool to I don't know it's so cool to to be excited for new Pokemon games again. I don't think these will be letdowns. They look so good. I love the region. I love the art style. I love the engine. I love the starters. Even though Gookie Gain all the way. Um, I honestly search. Such a great announcement. And as far as the Direct as a whole, I guess if we're going to rate the Direct as a whole, I would say 10 out of 10. I don't think it was necessarily the perfect or the best Direct in the sense of a... Like, compared to all Nintendo Directs, but it set out to be a Pokemon Direct. We got pretty much 7 minutes, if not missing a few here and there. You know, because there were... You know, some of the producers were talking, but we did get, like... Six minutes or seven minutes of Pokemon gameplay and Pokemon talk, and we got the starters shown in the region and um the the producers they they talked for a little while. So as far as that goes, I mean, I think it was a great direct. It it set out to be a Pokemon direct. It set out to talk about Gen Eight, and it did that really well. And I'm super excited. Like I said, Gookie Gain all the way. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, oh, you know what? We're gonna have to. Sub- you're gonna have to subscribe to Nintendo Switch Online to play Pokemon Online. That's gonna be wild. I really hope this has an actual battle. Look, back when Sun and Moon came out, myself and I'm sure a lot of people included never thought that anything could get worse than what was it? Was it the Plaza? The Battle Plaza. Whatever the system was in Sun and Moon. It was not good. It was not good at all. It was it was bad. It was all bad. I forgot what the, I forgot what it was called, but it was it was hot garbage. I did not like it. Then I, I thought there's no way they can make this worse. There's no way this could be any worse. Then they turn around and release Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And there's literally no way to battle somebody. Like the, or the, you battle, but the way that you battle or trade is so odd. You have to put in, like, three Pokemon in a row, like Eevee, Pikachu, Eevee. And then that, that other person that you're connecting with also does that. And you just hope that you get a, a battle that has your rule set. Or you hope that you find somebody to trade. That offers you what you want. I believe there was a way to just straight up battle and trade with friends on your friend list. I think there was. I didn't do any online stuff with Let's Go. But look, I haven't played competitive Pokemon in such a long time. I did a little bit of competitive in Sun and Moon, but sixth gen with X and Y and Oras, I I literally I played so much competitive Pokemon. It was like a part-time job i played so much vgc and small gun rules and and single battles double battles free for all so much stuff i loved i loved sixth gen sixth gen to me i think i think personally second gen was best i'm just gonna say it but I don't know, X and Y and ORS, those were some memories. And even though the games themselves may not have been that good, there are so many memories I have associated with X and Y and ORS. Man, 
those bring those are those bring back some really good memories of Wi-Fi battling and stuff like that. And who knows? I might get into it with these games. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a thing that I didn't necessarily grow out of. I don't think that's the word. I just I don't have the time for it anymore. You know, between doing YouTube and working full time and doing this and doing that, I just I don't have the time to sit down and breed or Pokegen Pokemon and. I just don't have the time to do a lot of that anymore. But still, I, I want these games to have an actual real online infrastructure. I want them to I want you to easily be able to find a random player with a proper rule set and limitations and stuff like that. But I also want there to be a way to wonder trade people. I missed Wonder Trade. I loved Wonder Trade in Sixth Gen. Why they took it out of Sun and Moon, I don't know. As far as I know, there is no... I don't think there's... I don't think there's one or trade. Let me actually look this up before I misspeak here. Oh, no. There was... There was one or trade in Sun and Moon. I misspoke. It's Let's Go that I meant. Um, and by the way, Sun and Moon had the Festival Plaza. That's what it's called. That was awful. That was not good whatsoever. But let's go Pikachu and Eevee. They don't have Wonder Trade. Which I thought... Like, for as much stuff as... For as much stuff as, like, let's go adapts from other Pokemon games. You, you'd think... I, I guess I understand why... I guess Wonder Trade wasn't included. Whether it's because they wanted to stay true to, fourth, or to first gen or... I don't know really what it was, but I missed Wonder Trade. I wish it stayed through the Let's Go games because I liked it. I liked Wonder Trade. I think it was fun. But I do want, and I think for a $60 main line RPG Pokemon game, I don't think there's any way that we don't get a proper online infrastructure this time around with a proper online uh, wait, with the proper way to battle people and trade with people, I really do hope that, I really do hope that we get better online support for these games, because I would imagine with so many people buying a Switch, so many people buying a Pokemon game for the first time since Let's Go, or for the first time, you know, in a long time, or, you know, just to buy, a, uh, there's gonna be so many people who buy Switch for these games, and I want these games to be as good, as polished as can be. And that includes having a proper online. But it is going to be weird. It is going to be, it's going to be so weird needing a subscription to Nintendo Switch Online to play Pokemon Online. It's such an odd thing. It is such an odd thing. It's It sounds like... I don't know. It's It's so weird to say that you need to have a Nintendo Switch Online or have a Nintendo Online subscription to play these games online when... They've been free to play online on the handhelds forever. And it's kind of weird. That's that's very odd. And I wonder how many people... I mean, I bought... I mean, I was going to buy a Nintendo Switch online regardless. I play my Switch a lot. It's only $20 a year. But I kind of bought it for Smash Bros. Because I needed to play Smash online. So I would imagine there's plenty of people who will buy the service for Pokemon... It's just, it's so, it's such an odd, it's such an odd thing to need a subscription service to play the, a Pokemon game like that online. It is such a, uh, it's such a weird thing, but otherwise, um, uh, yeah, this is, this is very exciting. I, I'm, I'm speechless now. I think I pretty much said everything about the direct, um, like I was trying to say earlier, I don't know if I'll buy both versions of the game. For both versions being priced at $59.99, it is, it's hard to swallow. It was easier on the 3DS to buy two games for 80 bucks. I don't think that's bad at all, especially when most games do cost $60. Um, buying two games that I, ma I usually... I usually... I usually maxed out a lot of my playtime, especially on Pokemon after like Black Two White Two. Like Black Two White Two, I I think I I think fifth gen I did max out my playtime. Like I hit one thousand hours, 
Um, same thing with all of six gen games. I played them so much, and that was across both versions of the games too. So I played well over two thousand hours of the games, and then some because I kept going. Sun and Moon, I, I don't think I did. Let's Go, I probably won't by the time these games come out. But, I mean, I usually get plenty of... I usually get a lot of playtime. I usually get a lot of playtime out of Pokemon games. Like, Pokemon is... That's why I could always justify buying two copies of the game because I, I knew I was going to play both and play them for a very long time. Even just within a year or two, I, I would have thousands of hours on the games and I played them so much. And like I was kind of saying earlier as well with, with working and doing YouTube and other games that I'm playing now, you know, I didn't play a lot of games other than Pokemon around sixth gen. So I had more time to play the games. Now it might be a different story. I don't really play I don't know if I'd play these games that much to warrant double dipping on them and buying both copies. So, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be very interesting. I don't know if Nintendo or Game Freak are necessarily going to try to sell both versions. Uh, right now, I am leaning towards Pokemon Sword. It's just such a cool sounding name. But depending on the exclusives between the two, I'll, I'll, pick, I end up, I'll, I'll pick the one. Uh, that has the cooler exclusives. That's the one I always go with first. Is the one that I think has the cooler exclusives. Or the Legends. We have not seen the Legends yet. Um, I think there was a point. Um, I had it pulled up. But then I, I lost it. I think there was a point. Where you kind of saw something etched into the ground. Well I guess that's Meltan. I wonder if Meltan's. I, I wonder if Meltan's going to play a role in these games. I mean, he's already, he's already, like, I don't know, is he, a, is he, a, I'm assuming he would be a Gen 7 Pokemon. I mean, you can get him in Let's Go. You can get him in Pokemon Go. I'm sure he'll play some role, like, pull a Zygarde and, and mention him or, or give him a very tiny role. I don't know how much of it they'll act upon, but I, I, I think Meltime will play a slight role. I want to see the Legendaries, though. Pokemon Sword and Shield. I mean, we have a Shield Pokemon, Aegislash. Who I guess is also technically a Sword Pokemon too. So I wonder if he'll get. <laughs> I wonder if he'll. I'm sure. I'm sure Aegislash will get mentioned or something like that. I'm sure he'll play a slight role. I think that'd be cool. But yeah, I'm excited to see the legends. I wonder what the. Yo, if we do get like a, I don't know if it'd be if it'd be lame to get like a giant sword Pokemon, and a shield Pokemon, um. So, I'm excited for the legends. I feel like they're gonna be. I feel like the, I'm I, I'm ex, I'm excited for the legends. I'm really excited. Um, other than that, I hope that we don't. I don't want too much on the game. I know I want to see the legends. I want to see more of the region. I want more story. I want this. I want that. But I don't want too much information on these games prior to their release. So I hope that between now and E3, this is all that we get. I hope that maybe at E3, this is kind of the main focus with, I think it was Sun and Moon. Or maybe it was Let's Go. I'm getting my, I'm getting my games mixed up. It might have, I'm pretty sure it was, it was Let's Go. Well, no, Sun and Moon did get a lot of information showcased before the games dropped. They did get a lot of information. A lot of information on that game dropped. And I think Let's Go even... I think that was a... Maybe... No, because in 2017... I think we got the... No, at 2017 E3, I think is what I'm thinking. We got confirmation that a main Pokemon game is coming. Which appears to be this, Pokemon Sword and Shield. And I'm pretty sure afterwards, like at the treehouse, it, it was probably, it would have to have been Sun and Moon. Or Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon they were playing. Because I think Sun and Moon came out in 2016, Ultra 
Sun Moon came out in 2017. Let's Go came out in 2018. These games coming out in 2019. So, a lot of like 7th Gen as well as Let's Go. Yeah, they had a lot of info shown before the games dropped. And I I don't necessarily want that. I, I want to be surprised when the games come out. I want there to be a lot. Not some, but I want there to be a lot of stuff. That I see for the first time playing the game. And not walk, not in a direct. Not in an E3 presentation. Not in anything like that. Because the thing is. If Nintendo does, does another Pokemon Center Direct. I'm going to watch it. Like I'm not going to not watch it. So hopefully they tone down a bit. Hopefully they don't give us too much. Before the game's released. Because I do want to be genuinely excited for these games. When they come out later this year. Um. But otherwise, they look amazing. The, the art style, I love the cell shading. I love the, the art design of the characters and the region. The Pokemon starters are cute. Brook again all the way. The Gorilla region seems like a lot of fun. I think the names are cool. It looks fantastic. Uh, I'm excited to get my hands on these games. I think that's all the time I've got this week. There is no what I've been playing this week. Haven't really been playing a lot of stuff outside of what I've already talked about in previous episodes. So... No game this week, uh, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up right here. Of course, if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and drop a comment if you're watching this on YouTube. But don't forget, we are now on SoundCloud. You can find a link in the description if you're listening on YouTube. If you want to support the show, you can find a link to that in the description down below. And if you want to follow on Twitter for updates and more, you can once again find a link in the description down below. But with that said... I'm going to go ahead and take off. Thank you for listening. And above all else, have yourself a good one.